Migration to the UK from other European Union countries is one of the top issues in the referendum debate on whether the UK should remain part of the EU. So what do we actually know about EU migration to the UK and the EU migrants that live here? Firstly, it's clear that EU migration to the UK has increased significantly over the last two decades. In 2015, there were just over 3 million people living in the UK who were born in other EU countries, an increase of about 1.9 million since 2003, the year before the expansion of the EU. Despite that, most migrants who are currently living in the UK are not from EU countries, and traditionally it's the non-EU countries like India and Pakistan that have been the main source of migration. But EU migration now makes up about half of the estimated number of people immigrating to the UK, which is quite unusual from a historical perspective. So we know that EU migration to the UK has increased in recent years. Where are the EU migrants coming from? The most important country of origin for people born in EU countries is Poland, and about 800,000 people born in Poland lived in the UK in 2015. This is followed by Ireland, and around 390,000 people, and then Germany, and about 280,000 people born in Germany lived in the UK in 2015. The countries that have seen the largest increase in the number of EU migrants living here over the past few years have been Poland and Romania. The number of recent migrants coming from these countries partly reflects the fact that of all the countries that have joined the EU since 2004, they have by far the largest populations. Just under 40 million people live in Poland and about 20 million live in Romania. But EU enlargement isn't the only reason for higher levels of EU migration recently. We've also been getting more migration from some of the southern European countries that are still struggling after the economic crisis. Three of the top six countries that have driven the growth in the EU migrant population of the UK since 2011 are old EU member states, Italy, Spain and Portugal. So what attracts EU migrants to the UK? Well, EU migrants are a very diverse group they're in the UK as students, family members, workers in some of the UK's highest paid jobs and some of the lowest paid jobs, as well as everything in between. And they also come from an array of social and economic backgrounds. But when we look at the data, we can pick out some overall trends. Specifically, we can see that most EU migrants report that they're coming to the UK for work. So the fact that the UK economy has been growing over the past few years and currently has record high levels of employment is likely to be an important pull factor. Lower wages in many new EU countries also make the UK an attractive destination. And unemployment in some of the older EU member states, like Italy and Spain, is also high, particularly among young people. In the run-up to the referendum, there's been a lot of discussion about whether welfare benefits are an incentive for people to come here. In fact, it's very hard to know if this is the case. In theory, it's possible that people factor in the availability of welfare benefits when they're deciding whether to migrate, but the majority of EU migrants aren't receiving benefits. EU migrants have very high employment rates in the UK, so relatively few are eligible for out-of-work benefits like job seekers allowance or incapacity benefit. But EU migrants are more likely than British-born people to be claiming tax credits which top up low incomes, because they're more likely to be in low-wage jobs. Even so, more than 80% of adult EU migrants aren't claiming tax credits. That means that while there may be some people whose decisions are influenced by welfare, it's unlikely that restricting access to benefits would have a dramatic impact on the number of people coming in. So, if Britain votes to leave the EU, how much will EU migration fall? The simple answer is that it's impossible to know for sure what will happen to migration. The main reason for that is that we can't know in advance what policies would apply to EU citizens after a vote to leave. It's clear that if the UK pulled out of the European Union, ended freedom of movement and made EU citizens meet the kind of criteria that non-EU citizens currently have to to come to the UK, then this could significantly reduce EU immigration. That's because most EU citizens are coming for work and the majority of recently arrived EU citizens are not in jobs that would meet the skill criteria that apply to non-EU citizens. But it's also possible that in order to get access to the EU single market, the UK would negotiate an association agreement along the lines of the Norwegian or Swiss models that include free movement. If that happened, there wouldn't be any significant new restrictions on EU migration, and so we wouldn't expect to see much impact on migration levels. 
Even when we know what the policies are, it's notoriously difficult to predict migration. So the truth is, with or without a vote for Brexit, it's hard to say exactly what EU migration will be 10 years from now.